Welcome everybody to the Monday, August 15th, 2022 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, if I call the meeting to order. Very first item, we we'll vote to approve the minutes of August 1st, 2022. Adam, Adam, nice job. Adam. Okay, look at the meeting. All right. So I'm going to second. Uh, we'll, we'll skip the warrants and we'll do it. All in favor. Okay. I'm sorry. Aye. All right. Two Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, that's, that's promised when when the people that are waiting will try to move it. We can move the agenda items along or around at the discretion of the chair with the consent of the board. So we move, move to the first item on the new business to discuss um, possibly adding a no trespassing area along the South River on Reedsbridge Road and vote regarding no parking signs possibly for the fees put up in that area of Reedsbridge Road. So um he no, wasn't it. certain whether he was. Um, he did communicate again. Uh, there he is. <laughs> we just called the, the item, um, so you just you ha have a seat and start talking. Um, so, since Bob Van Gelder is here and he initiated this more or less this uh, agenda item from the initial outreach to the, the, the board, you can sort of summarize summarize for us what your concerns are. Yeah, um, I just give a little history. Um, and if you don't mind speaking up for the owl. Oh, that's, <laughs> the microphone is right there in the middle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, didn't mean to interrupt, but can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm from Conway, although oh, I've my lived in that neighborhood, I've been for about 35 years. And uh, Suki Kinwall, one of my neighbors, told me uh, this recently that the uh, Sublime Trust was going to land. Mr. Sublime came by uh, shortly after both of us moved there and said that uh, he just wanted everyone to know that he's posting no trespassing signs. But he intended the property to be used by people in the neighborhood or anyone to walk in or whatever. And I guess that's extended people in town. Um, the dynamic has changed. I kind of say probably about the last decade. And we've seen this happen in other areas in the town where these recreationists has flowed into the rivers. The Westfield River is having problems, having problems up in Charlemont on the Deerfield and uh, land use and overuse and law enforcement, et cetera. Um, ours in, in, in our neighborhood are probably small compared to those, but they have been blossoming. We've had property damage, we've had emergency calls. Um, one of the things I don't like seeing doing is, uh, is, is are there are the, um, other kids part of this? Are they we, I think we have one Aldridge here. We do have an Aldridge. Hey, <laughs> how are you doing? I got, I got, a, I got a letter from, uh, or an email from Jerry Aldridge about this. So um, they're very concerned about limiting access. Uh, probably the, the primary users for the, for the people who run the Shibuya Trust is their family, and probably beneficiaries. And uh, it's natural, of course, you know, from any piece of property you want your family, extended family to enjoy. Um, and as uh, Jerry mentioned, this has been going on for decades. But in decades, the dynamics changed. And uh, we have people coming from, I counted, 11 states to this site. This is a recreation area. And it's not just that spot. It's all on the South River with 
the air that's supercharged is, is the Deerfield Bridge at the Guadalupe Ferry Bridge. And I don't know how, but something must have been done to like reduce the traffic on uh, Bridge Bridge Road because it was horrible in that first time. You know, like, uh, small buses going up and down at high speed, dust, noise, uh, people burning out on the corner by my place, now on radios, and the whole bit. And uh, so I imagine that's part of the reason for reducing the congestion of the bridge, marking off some areas as no parking, which is I propose that. But it's not so much the, the, the number of people there. I think particularly this year there was a drought. I don't think the, the uh, attendance is called for lack of any other amount. The site has been overwhelmed also below water level. But has, what has been going on a lot in the last few years is there are many dams down that site. And current DEP, like it's Title 91, that's a huge number. You don't do that. And the federal government feels the same way. Um, I've torn down several in the last, I've found five or six in the last three years. Uh, I've stopped three, no, two groups from, from in the middle of building them, and then I'm going to start taking them down. Um, as I put in my head, one of my grievances is I'm 72 years old. I got health problems a lot. People are 75. I can't do this. I go down there with a big foot crowbar and the swimming cart and start moving rock and come away when I'm feeling busy. Bruises and cuts and uh, 200 pound rocks that keep them moving around. Uh, this year, I stopped a group of three very young guys from the other day. I torn down two dams and the mark, first and one mark with the low water level. Um, I think I would like to see two things happen if it's possible. I'm not saying they were counting the table last year. Uh, um, I think the parking on the right on the, on the riverside, I know there's a disagreement on this. I think it's, it's hazardous. It's near the edge, and that edge has been sinking a couple of inches every year. The clerks of the road uh, mentioned that they see it dropping every year. I understand that the, the road work was done about 200 yards up the road from that same embankment to sleep there. It's quite expensive. I just want to say it's a really nice job that was done too. The pavement fell. Very, very nice. I have a problem with, you know, we can take Boulevard Highway Park and do a nice job of cleaning something like that up. But why should it happen in the first place? On the other side of the road, I think there's adequate parking for whatever number of cars show up. Um, second, uh, I will not do police in this area. I'm not a law enforcement individual anymore. Meaning I won't be tearing down dams. And I would like, if some way the uh, when a dam is built, the auditors can be notified and someone can take action to take the dam down. There's one alternative, of course, is to call the environmental police. They will just get in contact with the auditors. And I understand they're pretty light on this. They don't, all, they don't issue fines. It's just you know, a warning. You should not dam this dam. I think, in the spirit of what was mentioned in, in Jerry's book, the Friends of the South River, is that we, we do things that are in you know, keeping with the words, Friends of the South River. Friends of the South River don't want dams to be built. And I think it's my responsibility, I, mean, I own 900 feet on one side of the road. My responsibility is to keep that area. We're not doing anything bad to the river. I was one of the first people in this town to volunteer for the Title Five septic system on the top of the river. That costs a substantial amount of money. So, um, and I was very vocal in my objections to certain aspects of the bridge that were built in, you know, but rebuilt. Result being that this part of the bank, the bank by my house is now eroding. It wasn't before. 
I try to do things, some are I'm succeeding, some are failing. But I just want to bring those people attention. Many people, I would say, the majority of people in the neighborhood is not traffic, it's the amount of traffic. I don't know if I can make a difference. I mean, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. It's all over the internet. This is a place to go, this is a destination. And the only way to stop that is to take drastic measures, which are unsightly and unfriendly. So I think the parking on the other side of the road, from what I see in the traffic, there's enough room for whoever's coming down here. Um, just personally, I'll just say, I've been going down there a lot and talking to people, and quite honestly, I enjoy it. Um, I see my neighbors when they're walking and feeding the dogs out there, and they always talk. I've got nearly everyone does have concerns about the area. At the same time, like the people I meet, uh, I see young couples with new babies. It's down there. Um, well, about a week ago, I guess this extended family in the middle of the pool. They were somewhere in Central America. Somehow they got a grandmother <laughs> down there. <laughs> and we had a really fun conversation. So I meet people throughout the town who appreciate our town and pretty much for the most part you know respect the neighborhood. So um I think maybe if we could just take just a few minor steps. I'm not calling for anything specifically to mention women parking, but I think it has to do with everyone wants. So that's my intro. That's my Right. Thank you, Bob. So what I, what I'd like to do is just sort of um you know I'll, I'll ask Kendall in a second if she has anything to add to it, and then we'll hear from the Aldridges, um, and then we'll hear from the police chief and our our highway department about what their respective thoughts are about what we might be able to do. Uh, but um, so Kendall, do you have anything to add? You're on mute though. Thanks. I don't have a whole lot to add. I'm here in support of Bob. I don't abut this property directly, but I'm one house down. And I do consider myself to live down the road from a recreation area now. And it's a narrow road. And there are times when there's cars on both sides. I think an emergency vehicle could, surely couldn't get through here. I also worry about the erosion like Bob touched on and the trash. Um, and, and, you know, people get lost and they turn around in our driveway and leave ruts, but um, that's, that, I, that's really what I have to say. I, I'd love, to, I'm, I'm here to support and also to listen to the ideas. Thank you. Um, I can't, I can't see your, Yana, Yana, Yana Aldridge. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. So, um, I, I don't know what your relationship is. I guess you're one of the trustees. Yes. Of the trust. And um, we saw saw your the the note that Jerry I think it's Jerry um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do, is there, uh, that's my husband. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what's your um, what's your viewpoint on this? Um, well, like Bob, we we are concerned with um, abuse of the property of of people not being responsible. Um, and respectful. Um, we do have the no trespassing private property signs up. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a question of um, meeting our uh, responsibilities and so forth. Um, I do understand about, you know, the concerns about the road. Um, yes, we've, we've seen people parking way too close to the edge and, um, that, that's a concern also. Um, the point of, of Jerry's email was that we just, you know, as, as the landowners, um, we would like to somehow <laughs> be able to still access it easily, um, you know, so that, uh, as we get older and, uh, you know, we have children and grandchildren and so forth um, that use it occasionally, um, not often, but um, when we do go there, you know, we want to be able to access it. Um, so, you know, uh, certainly no parking on 
on the river side of the road, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, that would limit things somewhat. Um, I don't know that it would deter people. Um, I think they'd still find places to park and, <laughs> and walk from distances. Um, and they ignore the, the signs, certainly. Um, and so that's a concern. Uh, we have been very thankful that the, the neighbors are, are respectful and, and have watched out for the property and so forth over the years, um, since we're not there that often and, and we live a little distance. Um, so, so we do appreciate uh, people's concern for the property. It's, it's certainly uh, a unique place and, and uh, we want to, to make sure it remains pristine. Uh, there's no development on it. Um, and I foresee it staying that way. Um, so I'm just, you know, looking to your ideas as well um, as to what might be, um, you know, an improvement on the whole situation. No, I, 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 these actually are, are com more complicated issues than people appreciate. Um, yeah. And you know that that I think uh, to to a lot extent to to a large extent the river access is like a balloon and that when you squeeze it in one place people migrate up or down the river. Sure. Uh, you know I I noticed when the state closed the parking areas in Charlemont there was the, I think we've seen the the results of that even up even here I know Deerfield will see the results of that tremendously. I know when the naked guy went on a drug fueled rampage at the Deerfield parking area and they shut half their parking area, that had an, uh, 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 an effect in, to our river access. Um, and I also know that there's no real person here advocating for the, you know, the, just the working stiff that just, just needs a place to recreate with their kids. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, but, you know, that's all true as well. And, um, yeah, but at the same time, the, it just gets out of hand, and there are people that just don't have enough respect for mm -hmm. the world around them, and they make a mess of it for others. Um, but it, that sounds about your your two your what I hear is your two main concerns are the are the building stands and the parking on the riverside. I have a whole list of concerns. But, but that's, okay. No, I know. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. what I, all right. So, um, so I would like to hear from Ron as far as like the state of the road on that side. Um, and then I have other questions about the, about the dam building as well. Well, um, the road, the bank slid um, must be 12, 14 years ago from the, because of the tree growth. Since then, there doesn't appear to be any, any more sliding of the bank once the trees made it to the bottom. Um, as far as parking on that side, I kind of disagree with it sinking. I mean, it's, if it's sinking a couple inches a year, um, it doesn't appear to be more than three or four inches lower than the road now, so I don't, don't agree with that. There used to be buildings along that side of the road. The foundations are still there. I mean, there's a few places where Irene caused a little bit of damage with the edge of the road by one of the, where one of the buildings was. Um, I personally think that um, it's not really a highway issue. I mean, if the people are parking where it impedes the operation of people driving it, then yes, there needs to be something done with that, but um, it's more of, we had the issue down at Fireworth Ferry Bridge and taking the no account parking on the side of the road because we had issues with um, cars not being able to get through. That solved that problem off on Chateau and that goes a long ways. And you know, people knowing that, you know, it can't happen. But I don't personally, I've never been over on the Reeds Bridge where it's been where I've seen an issue. Um, I'm not saying that hasn't, but I just don't think you can't take things. I mean, 
it's not a highway situation or a town situation that people aren't breaking the law. If it's because you're trying to protect who's going on the property, that's on the property. I guess the question would be, if there were cars parked on both sides of the road, would it present the same issue that was happening in that bar was there? So obviously we want to avoid that. If they were parked in the road, yes. Yes. But when I've been down there, I don't see them parked in the roadway so much. I don't even block it. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. In my observances, I haven't seen it in the road. There's a few different spots they can get off the road. And they tend to do it. I would encourage the landowner or an agent of the landowner to repost the land if they don't want people on the land. Because there's not a lot of signs there currently. So if they want to reinforce that, I would definitely encourage them to do some kind of signage up on private property, right commission only, however they want to work. Is up to them. If they want everybody out there, or if they want to limit it, so that's up to the individual property. So, how far off the road <clears throat> would you have to be to be on the landowner's property? Is there a certain? I have no idea what the on the landowner's property. As far as the town, is it the right of way? Yes. Six feet in the side, including the foot. No, no. It varies. It varies. Very the right of way, the road could be right to tight to one side of the right of way. You know, and you have a, a lot of footage on the other side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's actually, I think I might have all that information for that section of the road. I think if I did have that survey or right of way survey done. I have when, when I see I had some pictures of the two twice in the last couple of years in terms of a dozen emergency vehicles there on both sides of the road. And uh, it was impossible for two vehicles to pass. It's very difficult to warn them what's happening. Well, certainly, when the emergency vehicles descend on that, any subject, mm -hmm. they plug them up. Right. Period. Nobody's going on the road of that nature. I know I was there, so yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. But I've seen crowds as large as that. Yeah. Uh, I, I have never witnessed those kind of crowds other than when emergency vehicles are going. Okay. I don't want to cast stones with firemen, <laughs> but when fire trucks show up. Oh, no, no, they were glad to see them. I walked up road on the second day. Sure, I've seen it. I've seen and, it. And, and I've noticed a lot of crowds. And I would I would encourage if, if the concern is the overabundance of people using the property, mm -hmm. I would encourage the landowner to put up more signage. How you want to word it again is up to you. If you want nobody on there, or if you want by permission only, I can't speak for you on that respect. Once that happens, say they post the mm -hmm. then it then they can. Follow the authority. Then, then we can actually do something. But it's got to be legally posted, mm -hmm. not just a sign here and there. The people are just going to go up and say, "Well, before I came in, there was no signs." I think this is the first step: is just letting people know there's an issue to get the word out. It's not going to probably be a huge impact. It will be an impact at least to us locals who can pass the word around. Um, as far as the sign, I don't know if South River Trust can help out with a sign saying we want to keep our land, um, you know, the way it is, not to build dams, not to have litter, you know, extra signage like that would also be helpful because I know it's counter to the don't trespass sign, but if people are already ignoring that, maybe they'll at least pay attention to um, signs saying, you know, keep, keep the land free of about changing the flow of water and litter, of course. And the question whose jurisdiction would it be in the waterway itself? Uh, and the answer I'm all in. That is the Massachusetts Environmental Police. Yeah. Uh, I would the, suspect, inland, the inland waterway section. I would suspect, but and, yeah. and they I have never a, seen them 
show up to do anything about it. Um, and I did I did actually inquire about that, and they have a one eight hundred number that is uh, manned and staffed twenty four seven. They and a dispatch at the dispatch. The yes. Man and staff. Yes. They are short handed. I will tell you right now. Uh, you would be lucky to see an officer. Um, I do see them driving about yeah. time and round, but yeah. um, but they you know and, and their their chief mission is educational in nature, um, and they like to like like Bob said they're they're sort of well known for. Uh, yeah, issuing warnings or what, unless the, you know, unless the situation requires otherwise. But um, you know that, that you know it, it is it is a bad thing to do. It's bad for the fishes to 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 move the rocks around. Bad for the stuff. The man of the Tom Tom, that's in Strangeys, had the same problem on the pier with it. Yeah. Anyone who's a water boy these days. The, so the next big thing is wash them all away. <laughs> I've yet to see a dam constructed by three teenage boys that hasn't, <laughs> hasn't so, disappeared. <laughs> so would would the alderages be willing to or would the trust be willing to put up fresh uh um no trespassing signs or uh, so, so that we could try that as an intermediate step before you before posting no park no no parking signs because yeah, we certainly can. I mean, I put them up every year. They get torn down. I bring a tall ladder and try and go up the trees as much as we can to, to post them. Um, but, uh, you know, I can I can do more of, of them. Um, I'm not sure what the best type of sign or legal type of sign is. And maybe, a, you know, I could talk to the uh, police officer about that. Um, you know, I just, I've been getting the no trespassing signs from the hardware store because they're fluorescent and easy to see. Um, those are legal. Those are legal. Okay, great. Okay. You um, probably discuss as to how far across they need to be, and the whole property needs to be posted. You uh -huh. can't post the roadside. You have right. to post your whole property. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, we have about, I think, 14 acres, so um, I'll get a bunch of signs, <laughs> so, um, I'm bring yeah. Back to word of mouth, I mean, this area got popular because of word of mouth. So, yeah. yeah, I think it would help out to talk to your neighbors as you've done. Conway Currents, not that the reporter's not great, but Conway Currents, maybe putting something in there. I was actually told that there was like a Boston Globe travel section thing oh, 10 yeah. years ago and best yeah. swimming holes in yeah. the state. And this that's, was number five or something. <laughs> and then I know. That's really what brought this whole area to the yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was in the Valley Advocate years ago and it's been, yeah. Why don't you tell about your experience putting up the, the, the most recent signs? What's that? Why don't you tell about your experience putting up the most recent signage? Uh, yeah, the day the, the, they're hard to put up that high. Yeah. While you were putting up the people who went through while you were posting signs. Yeah, they they just walked right by and um, you know. From school? Yeah, there was a. a a school van that came uh, from a private school with a um, load full of, of students and they walked right by them and on down. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I put them up high so that they don't get torn down. Uh, so I'll put them at all different levels and see what we can, <laughs> can maintain. Um, it seems to be a, a challenge for people to take them down, but uh, we'll, I can we'll, in a situation like that as a property owner, I would have called the school and said, hey, sorry, yeah. this is private property. Yeah. Please don't yeah. bring your students here. You know, it's a liability issue. And um, right, it is. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that incident? Uh, early in the summer, beginning part of the school? summer. Do you remember what school it was? I, I believe. I do, but I can't be a hundred percent certain. I, I think it would might have been the Bement School, but I can't I can't remember a hundred percent. So I wouldn't I wouldn't say, but um you have to drive past five or six very good river access points to get there. <laughs> I, I, I will daily see a bus put on the station. Yeah. That's my story school to be coming every day. 
Okay. I mentioned it because this is this puts all kinds of sudden burden on the older kids. You know, I'll go back to when we moved there. It was my thing. Is your father who came My by. father. My father. I told everyone so confident was for you folks to use. So uh, I think, you know, any kind of system. Oops. I, I think the Zoom froze. Kendall, are you seeing anything happening? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you, but the select people aren't, aren't moving. <laughs> right. Jana, would you consider a, a, a sign that says private property in addition to no trespassing? Because it does. It says happens. it says both. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so small, it's just in little letters around the perimeter. The yeah, I can I can get both kinds. Yeah. To me, that just means there's a person rather than say, mm -hmm. it, it means there's people behind that sign. Yeah, I also write on the bottom of it, uh, Savoyan Family Trust. And Apologies, everybody, we were gone. You may not have noticed it, but we disappeared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying what? to get rid of the leaf off. Um, we were talking, we had just talked about the bus. Oh, right. School. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Sometimes I think the internet just cuts us out here and but we're back. <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, I, it, it would, it is a bit of an imposition to ask you to put all the no trespassing signs up, but the, the you know, it's, I think it's still more aesthetically pleasing than having no parking signs all written, you know, every 10 feet up, up and down the street right there. So, Okay. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, of course, are the property Bill, Bill Graves had some their multi generational farming family in the community and, and others. Um, and it's, it's not as intrusive, I think, as testing the parking signs or painting the parking lot. But, but Barbara Spray was a desperate situation. Not well, Bob, I know you said, despite the signs that you've had up, people ignore them, walk right past them too. So down at your property, right? Yeah, yeah. it's probably holds back some. I mean, okay, the, the, the genie's out of the bottle. And um, it's hard to stop that. I, I have had, uh, it wasn't a big problem. Fishermen on my property have walked across the lawn, camped there. I got the, uh, Fish and Wildlife to stop stocking the river at that point, which I was um, decided to do after I saw a couple of guys without a fishing pole with a five gallon bucket in the net <laughs> right after we stocked. So, in the spirit of true fishing, I said we should move it to one of half a dozen other areas in town. Um, posting the area is, 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 is definitely less difficult. And, and will be less intrusive. I've even tried to make my signs, which, which are your sign, not only to very nicely put up, I kept them as uh, out of view as possible until someone comes actually on the area. Um, so we have to look for ways to do that. I know people won't like seeing no transparency signs. I didn't want to put them up. But, but it does allow them. Hmm? It does allow our police to enforce yeah, criminal yeah. trespassing laws. I, that's what I was told. That's when I started having problems about ten years ago. I can others told if you want to stop this, you have some authority. You have to put no trespassing signs. It's first rule. It's unchanging. And the same problem in Shelburne. Um, I can't remember they call it Suffolk Beach. Mm -hmm. Sunburn. 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 Yeah. They have the same issue there. The posted right. signs, people were ignoring them and it didn't stop until they started getting fired. And you can't email tickets, but at least you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. So um, looks like 
the intermediary step and we'll see how it goes. And yeah. I know if we had to order no trespassing signs, it wouldn't have been put up in time for the rest of this summer anyway. So oh, exactly. And I gotta be honest with you, the past week there's been nobody there. Yeah. No, it, 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 it cooled down. Oh, well, you know, it's it's 85 degrees, but there's still nobody there. Well, the, the river is very low too, right? Yeah. 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 People just don't want to be. I talked to people, a few people got it down there. We just go down there and sun on the rocks now. All right. So thank you, everybody. It's posted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all your efforts. And uh, again, uh, we're trying to be good stewards of the property and, and we appreciate the neighbors as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're into the next next item and thank you. Thank you, Ken. If I may, I just wanted to apologize to Mr. Rogers. I muted you if you could unmute yourself. <laughs> And then I need to apologize to Jan because we couldn't figure out how to be able to put the information, um, share it on the Zoom. Difficulties, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm here. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Bad sunlight, but let's see if I can fix it. No. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Can everyone else? Can you hear oh. me okay? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hmm. Ah, share screen. Host disabled part participants. Can anyone hear me? I don't have I can, any sound. I can see you, Jen. Can you see me? Uh, hold on. I can. I can see you, and I hear you coming from somewhere. Just a sec. <laughs> I'm not the best on this. Hello. Hello. I can hear yeah. you. Person. Okay. There we go. Now I have sound. What about everyone else? Where's everyone else? I, I don't know. They, they're not here anymore. I don't know. Yeah. They, I only can see you. Do you think they lost their connection again? They may have. I was on with those guys. I could never see you before. Right. I had my video turned off. Oh, okay, so I know, now now I can see you, but just you. Yeah. Um, hmm. So what I, you I think <laughs> we just have this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you see how that they how they lost connection in the middle of the meeting? You popped up. They disappeared. Just right now in the last. No, season. but but before they lost connection before. They did. They did. Yes. I wonder if they lost it again. Uh, the participants, three other people. But they're uh, Rich, Jan Warner, and Alan's phone. Alan's the only one, but he's uh, he's off yeah. camera. Right. I think they lost internet at the town hall. That's what I think. Probably. Oh, you think that's you think that's what happened? Yep. But, uh, oh. I guess we just wait a couple of minutes and see if they can come just back. start try it again. There I we guess go. we can we can try. Do you want me to sign off and then sign back on? Uh, okay, I'll try that too. Okay, so I'm just gonna get out of here and try it again. We. I can see you, Jim. Yep, I think they lost internet because it's the same same thing, right? Yeah, this is it. Yeah, same. Yeah, I just I signed off and came back. Hmm. You want to call them on the phone? Oh, I don't have their numbers. Yeah, let me try that. Okay. All right. I see you're back. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're having uh, technical problems. Her computer okay. keeps shutting down. <laughs> we could, whenever they like, whatever, we can do it another time or we can hang out for a little bit and see if they come mm -hmm. back. Yeah, let's just hold on for a minute. They're trying to get okay, it together. Sure. We'll see what happens. Sounds like so a good deal. We just had a wonderful dinner. <laughs> No, did you did you actually? But yeah, my son made a um a smoked prime rib and it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Then you fit it in. I, well, I I had like the earbud in, <laughs> waiting for my turn, trying to listen to the dinner conversation, oh, and hear them up. at the same time. <laughs> that is so funny. Because yeah. yeah, if it was five thirty, that's an hour and ten minutes, so it worked out. 
<laughs> yeah, I think we'll we'll wait like another five minutes or something, and then just postpone. Try it another try it another time. Yeah, I learned about signs, and you can get them at the local store hardware store, and they're still illegal. <laughs> signs. They had a swimming place. I guess some kids are showing up at a swimming place that they say no trespassing. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Did you see the news? My wife just told me before this meeting that in uh, Edgartown and Martha's Vineyard, four kids jumped off that that bridge. They jump off to you know swim. They yeah, jump off the, and they the Jaws Bridge. Yeah, and they two died? of them died. Yeah, last night, eleven o'clock. Last night? Oh my gosh! Been, we go think. there all the time. My friends vacation there every summer. I've jumped off that bridge many times. So I was wondering how high it is. It doesn't sound like it's very high. It's not that high. I'd say you're probably like 15 feet into the water. So I wonder what happened. They just, they drowned. Is there a current underneath it? That's what There's I was a current and, you know, the tide comes in and out and maybe they hit it at low tide or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the, the most dangerous part about it is, um, you know, it's a, it's a bridge on a road. So there's a railing and you have to climb up and balance Ooh. on the railing and then okay. jump in. So and so... That's where I'm always scared that I'm going to fall off the railing backwards instead of forwards. Look at that. All Yay. right. Sorry. And, 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 you know, I apologize in advance. This thing is probably going to shut down again and we'll just reboot. But okay. it restarted my computer. So quick before Barney. So talk quick. Before I lose my mind. <laughs> um, so, so, Jan, you got the message from me that I, I'm not able to put the information up on the screen. Yeah, right. hopefully everybody got them by email. We do. Yeah, we got them. We do. We all have. We all even if you had it on screen, it's kind of small print to see up there. So um, anyway, I brought everybody together tonight, or you know, asked to meet with you tonight um, to get uh, an update on our financial situation with our trust funds and investment funds. And as you know, the, the market hasn't been so kind to us. And so I thought it even more prudent that I should bring it to your attention. And so um, we got a report for our um, annual uh, evaluation, I guess you call it. And we were down by 1.89, which in my opinion, I think Rich is gonna speak in a minute. Um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good deal for what the market the market's been going through and Rich is going to tell us more about the future and you know our year-to-date earnings aren't looking so bad. So um, Rich Rogers is from Abbey Capital and I, I think most of you have met him before but he's been our investment agent for a long time and um, does a really wonderful job and I don't know if you've taken note in our uh, or my annual report, the treasurer's report, but there's been uh, only one other year that we had a small loss and it was less than a 1% loss. And that was uh, back in, I think it was right here. 2018. Yeah, 2018. Um, so otherwise we've been on the upside every year, um, even through some pretty significant market dips. And, you know, I largely attribute it to Rich's um, cautious investing and good guidance and um, we're happy to I work with it to your cautious investing and good guidance james no i give him the credit he's he's but, you know, and, and i know that we you know we we have really grown to depend on the annual increases because we you know our, our the, the trusts and everything we we sort of have fashioned a policy of trying to spend the interest income and leave the principal alone um, yeah but but that, I don't know how we're going to manage to do that if there isn't interest income. Well, we still have we still have some interest, and um, Rich has moved us to a lot of uh, equities that that give us dividends. So we're still having some pretty good earnings despite the market um, dip. So um, go ahead and jump in, Rich. I, I think you probably can explain things better than I. Sure. No, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys letting me join from uh, Zoom. Uh, you saved me a couple hours on the road this afternoon. Which is, <laughs> I, do, I do appreciate that. Um, to give you a little idea, you know, what I do is go through our asset allocation, how we have the funds allocated now between stocks, bonds, and cash. Also give you a little idea, you know, for the first time and probably since 2009, 
interest rates interest rates haven't been at zero percent. So what we've done very recently in the last say four and a half months uh, regarding fixed income, actually buying some short term fixed income. Uh, which actually yields something which will actually increase our income to the account pretty nicely. Um, so, and just on a side note, before I tell you the asset allocation, things like that, the equities themselves have an average dividend yield of 3.2%. So the million dollars that we have in equities, that will generate dividend interest of around 3.2%, around $31,000 this year, the calendar year. Um, so, and then the fixed income probably yields, it always yields less than substantially less than, one, less than 1%. Now it's probably in the land, in the area around two and a half, two and three quarters. Uh, we've kept maturities extremely short. Um, so to give you an idea where we stand now, we're 25, 25.9% in stocks. We're 70% now in fixed income. That's only really been in the last six months that we've really stepped up short. They're all very short term fixed income maturities all under three years, except for one that we have a CD that matures a little over three years. Um, with 3.7% of money markets, money markets always lag by about six months, uh, what you can get in three, six, nine, one, two year treasuries or CDs. So we've moved a sizable amount of money out of the money market and have bought some short term treasuries and CDs. Um, as um, Jan mentioned, we're off 1.89% on your fiscal year. Um, as of June 30th, we were off 2.7% uh, in, in the funds. 65% of that negative return, it's an unrealized return. We haven't sold things and, and locked in losses. 65% is the unrealized loss, even on those short-term treasuries and CDs I just recently purchased. Because even over the last four months and three months, rates have even gone up substantially. Um, the two-year treasury right now is at 326. Uh, a few months ago, it was at 1.5%. So even those treasuries that I bought uh, have an unrealized loss. You hold them to maturity, $1.1 million that we've just recently bought matures in less than a year here. We hold those to maturity, we get our money back plus the stated return. Uh, so it's a little bit back end weighted when you buy a T bill, it matures at like if you buy 500,000, it matures at $500,000. The interest you don't see until it ultimately matures. And one point million dollars of that fixed income matures in March and uh, May next year. So that really won't even show up as income until they ultimately mature. Um, to give you an idea, you know, we're down about 2.2% year to date. The, uh, the equity market, S&P 500 is down about 11%. And the 10 year treasury is down about 11% as well. So we're, we're certainly beating the market pretty substantially. We did sell a few things at the end of last year, like Emerson and a few other stocks like PPG, we should have sold more, but yields were still at less than half a percent on a 10 year treasury. So to sell things and put things in money markets that the money markets are yielding 0% was a very tough call. So I didn't lighten up too much. Um, other than that, we still have an unrealized gain in the account of 290,000. Uh, as of January 30th, the, uh, we had an unrealized gain in fixed income, 32,000. As of July 31st, we have an unrealized loss in fixed income of 30,000. So that's $62,000. Of our, 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 of our return that's kind of hurt us. We'll get that fixed income money back plus the state of return, but it just shows you for performance purposes uh, that when rates spike like they have, and they haven't really spiked like this in my career, uh, it certainly made the statements look very bad on a, and, and hurt my performance. Uh, so I'd say over that 2.2%, about 65% of that unrealized loss that we have is, is the fixed income not looking good in the statement. We have an inverted yield curve. So the 10 year yield right now is around, what's 10 year? It's at a uh, 279. That's the yield on a 10 year treasury. A two year treasury yields uh, 225, uh, 325. So you can see you get paid substantially more for buying a two year treasury than you do buying a, a 10 year treasury. What that's signifying is that 
there's a decent, very good chance of a recession going into 2023. Some may say we've already in a recession. Uh, that's not really clear at this point. We have had two quarters of negative GDP, um, but unemployment and some of the other numbers say that we're not in a recession at this point. I'm cautious about the legalist stocks. They still trade expensive historically, but I have 26 stocks to pick from. I would love to own Chevron, ExxonMobil, and many other stocks at this point, but those aren't on the legal list. I'm really forced to buy drug stocks and consumer staple stocks, which have had a nice bounce in the last 30 days, but I'm not expecting much as far as a performance on those stocks over the next, say, six months to 12 months. So with 25.9% in equities, you know, that's, that's not a very high allocation. Those stocks yield about 3.2%. As I said, they're going to add about $31,000 in income. I am hesitant to sell them. Um, however, I personally feel that, you know, a two-year treasury at 325 is not a bad deal. That's a guaranteed return over the next uh, year or two years. But the one-year yields at around 318 right now. So those are guaranteed returns. Um, the equities we own, I'm not 100% sure they'll do better than that. Uh, we still have an unrealized gain I mentioned of 290, so it's very difficult to liquidate even more. We did sell some things at the end of last year. So I'm cautious, cautious about the equities we own going forward over the next 12 months. Anything matures, we'll be able to buy some decent yielding treasuries or CDs going forward. And um, we have sold some things. A little status quo at this point because it's not too clear as far as which way the S&P or these type of stocks that we own will what, what they'll do over the next three months and who the hell knows really over the next six months. In the long run, I think we'll be okay if we hold them. I'm just trying to protect the downside and have a positive return this year. I'm off 2.2%. I have one quarter to go here. Um, so my goal is I've only had one down year and it was down less than 1% in 2018. Uh, 2005 and seven and eight and nine, when people got hit pretty hard, we had positive returns because of the fixed income. I'm thinking that the fixed income I own uh, may actually help us uh, towards the end of the year. Those unrealized gains, if they disappear, uh, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. So do you guys have any questions, thoughts, concerns? Well, the one thing I just want, just in case people people do listen to this at, um, sure. at home, and when, when I heard you mention uh, um, Mobile Exxon and Chevron and everything, and, um, you were mentioning it in the con just to just to slow just in the context that they're not on the approved stock list. That's right. Conway does not own any stock in those giant evil oil companies, and they don't. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's the same reason that you don't own stock in the New York Yankees or something like that. It's just because they're evil. Um, and uh, so. You know, but, but if people if people thought that their tax dollars were being invested in those companies, I would, everybody knows where I live. We don't want to do that. So. I hear you. So we don't own those because they're not. I have twenty six stocks to pick from. I wish I had more. We wouldn't. We wouldn't have to buy Exxon no stocks, but I could buy. I could have bought Intel right now or Microsoft would have got hit. I own Apple for other municipalities. I'd love it to own it for you guys. I made five times our money on that stock. So that's the difference. Uh, is Chris in? Is Chris in the meeting? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I so, am. Yeah. So just as a new select board member, I'm not sure you fully understand our investment account, but uh, so we're talking about obviously the long-term investments, and I don't know if you had a chance to look at the list, but it includes um, all of the trust funds, and in addition, our stabilization funds, our community preservation funds, and uh, OPEB. So I just wanted to make sure you knew which which funds we were talking about. And aside from that, you know, all of our funds are are liquid and um, involved with the bills and receivables of the town. But this is more long term things. Thank you. Sure. Um, yeah. So I, uh, I I've been pleased with the whole approach that we take. I think it's like you know I, I like. I, you know, we've had good, really good numbers for a long time, and um, we've been doing better than our neighboring towns. I know that we talk about those things. So, um, that last year, especially last year, we had the seven. Yeah, we had a good year last year. 
We yeah, did. And, yeah, we were the envy of our neighboring towns last year. Although we're the envy of our neighboring towns every year, but for that reason now too. But, um, <laughs> Tell them to call us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so no, I think. Yeah. So you know what? We're, we're staying the course. That this is our our plan has been sketched out for us right here. All and, right. Uh, this is what we're doing. Is that? I mean, we're, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I know my, my college fund has lost more than that. So, um, so <laughs> my college fund, kids' college fund. Yeah, so any, anybody have any questions for Rich or Jim? No, thank you. This is very, this is really comprehensive and helpful. You're welcome. Good job, Jim. Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Thanks, All Rich. Right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. All right. Good night. Thank you. Robert Lamas requested a liquor license for Conway Trading. Saving the best for last. Okay. I make the motion. <laughs> no, we want to hear the story. Okay, we want to hear right. the story. <laughs> a story? You have, you have Chris Larry from the quarter next oh, to you. Okay. Is, is you well, T tell us about your place, and then it's we're, we're all eagerly anticipating. I don't know. I must have been crazy <laughs> um, to do this, but the old Jermaine garage owned by Mallory for, I guess, many years, since like 73 or something, came up on the market. He was trying to get rid of it. It had been run down for a while, derelict. And I put a low ball bid and I didn't seriously think it would win. He wanted way much more money for it. And eventually, I guess they couldn't. I mean, a lot of people looked at the place. I mean, like, the building is, it's, it's just beautiful. I mean, they, don't, they can't make them like that anymore. Um, but when they saw inside <laughs> what had to be done. But anyhow, my low ball bid won. So I said, well, I guess I'm doing it. Um, so I bought it and I've been fixing it up the last couple of years. And um, the intention is, and you know, with when Slangevin's closed and everything, there really isn't a place you can buy a six pack of beer in, in town. And um, I think it's a great spot for a package convenience store, you know downtown there and um we have taken pains to preserve the character of the building inside and, and out and everything we had to put a new roof on it obviously to deal with that disaster uh, but we are trying to preserve the character of it and we have artifacts and memorabilia that we salvaged from it that we'll you know put on the walls you know something about it when it was a garage something about the germanes But I guess I'm going to try to make go of it, uh, assuming that I get approved and the state doesn't dredge up something from my evil dark past or something <laughs> that <laughs> disqualifies me from owning a liquor license, but uh, or having a liquor license. Well, I'm very excited because having lived across from Langevin's for so many years. And once Langevin's closed, it was really, I mean, not just because it was very convenient for me to send my children across the street there to like right. buy groceries for me, but just to have like activity. And now there's like- You guys need to get me a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but people are like using Langevin's shop right now. And I love it. They're like kids over there working on bars and stuff and like barbecuing and I just, I'm, you know, like I stopped the other day and someone was like, oh my God, I'm sorry, are we bothering you? I was like, no, I'm just so glad there's like stuff happening here. So I'm really happy that you are opening a shop in Hong Yeah, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to try. Um, Selling food too? Well, if it's not perishable. Just, just trying to drum up, just trying to drum up money for our Dixie Williams license. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because first of all, I don't have enough of a you know, like a kitchen premises to actually prepare food there. Uh, Although once I'm open, you know, depending on how things are going, it is possible we could make stuff at the inn, which does have, you know, a licensed yeah. kitchen and everything. 
and bring it over there to sell it. Like, you know, we want to do breakfast sandwiches in the morning. We, we are going to do coffee. I don't know if I need to come and get you a license for that. I really do. Yeah. I hope not, because I, I would. I intend to have a coffee bar and try to be open early in the morning to catch the, the community traffic. I think it's actually a catering license if you take food from somewhere else, then it's cooked somewhere else and you sell it there. It's okay. just a catering license, as far as I know. So you just have to come back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I know there's another license I need just, I guess, to, you know, to sell stuff to be a convenience store. It's Massachusetts. You always need another yeah. license. So yeah. There is another license I'm going to need for that, but I, I understand that the liquor license is the one that's the most difficult. And yes, I do want to sell lottery tickets too. And, and that's another um, whole procedure, if I understand. I'll have to get on with mass lottery and see what their deal is here. But does Baker sell lottery tickets? Do they? they yes. Well, they used to. I don't no, know. Still but they still do. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I recall they used to. I wasn't sure if they still did. Yes, they still do. Um, I mean, I don't play it myself, but you yeah. know, a lot of people do. So, like my mother, she'll be my best customer. <laughs> There's different levels of liquor licenses, right? You have one if it's just beer, and then another if you're trying to sell wine. Well, it didn't say that on the side of the initial paperwork. It's, I think, I, my impression was. You know, I know in New York you have to buy beer and wine in supermarkets, and then the liquor stores is only hard liquor. But that's yeah. New York in Mass. It's just, um, you know, a liquor license. I thought you saw everything: beer, wine, yeah. spirits, you know, all that. Um, and that's my intention. I I want to carry, a, you know, a wide variety. I understand I have to try to cater somewhat to a lot of different palates here, but um, you will be selling tequila, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to do it. What makes strategic selections? You know, obviously that <laughs> select board selection. <laughs> that was one of the best things about living across the street from Landman. I just feel like this is the kind of wine I like. This is the kind of beer. This is the kind of. And I, and I do tend to <laughs> carry convenience items like you know where you, where can you get a gallon of milk? You know at this time of night or or, or day, without having to drive ten eight or ten miles to Deerfield or Mayfield or something. You know, and like kitty food and toilet paper, paper towels, that kind of convenience stuff. Anything that I think can, you know, you know, reasonably sell. I don't expect to really make any money on the non alcohol <laughs> spirit. That's going to be the loss leader, you know, just as a convenience. I'm pretty much intending that I think alcohol and lottery tickets are pretty much going to be the main source of revenue. Well, now, I can cheese and wine. I can make some suggestions, and my children will keep you. <laughs> well, I will. I will take suggestions from anybody. I mean, certainly, I intend to listen to the, um, you know, my customers and the community. If, if people want it, and I can get it at a reasonable price that I can sell it at, where they would buy it, um, sure, I'll, I'll try it. Um, so I'm not. We're, we intend also like. Rochelle, like we'll sell flower arrangements, you know, anything. If someone wants to sell their craft or whatever, and there's a place I can put it or hang it on my wall or something, it's all negotiable, you know. So I intend to sell whatever I can, whatever I think can can turn over here. And hopefully I can pay the bills with it. It'll work. My electric bill, I assume, will be exorbitant once the electric company says, oh, we can charge. <laughs> and you've got a lot of fingers in there. Um, so hopefully I, I can make a go of it. And I figure that even if I fail <laughs> and it doesn't work, um, I will have restored that building and I can sell it. So there's a silver lining. You know, I'll get some of my investment in rebuilding that thing. It would have been cheaper just to tear it down and build a new building. I did not do that. Yeah. <laughs> But we couldn't do that. Yeah. Um, so, with all the craziness and restoring this whole brick building, trying to keep the, the feel, the steampunk feel of the garage. Steampunk feel. Yeah. I like that. I would like to make a motion that we approve um, Robert Lomas's application for a liquor license. Or common or whatever, but whatever license would allow convenience. you to open yeah, well, a package the liquor store. portion of it here. Yes, uh, I'm absolutely in favor. Of second, that. all in favor. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All you have to do is go down. 
Hey, Adam has all my, my submission here. I guess there's a process for we just have to you guys it. have to forward it to the BCC or something. Oh, yeah, we get to sign it. You have to frame it, put it in the wall with our signature. <laughs> All right, very good. I can't wait. When are you going to open? I'd like to try to be open, even if I don't have the liquor license, at least be open for the Festival of the Hills so people can at least walk in and, uh, yeah. and, and see. I mean, yeah. at least have the doors open. I don't know if I'll have anything to sell, but, you know, oh, great. at least be that for a long where I can at least see the people, you know, from the county come in and see, oh, wow, you're, you're doing something here. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, be there. we'll be there for the ribbon cutting. <laughs> uh, next item, discuss and vote on a letter of the select board endorsing Paul Mark. So I did make just a couple of changes to it, but nothing at all. You know, he, the, the, the part that says our priority is getting broadband in the town, we already got yeah. that, so stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't like that. The concept. <coughs> he was the gentleman that we met at the Conway Right. That we walked up yeah. and the campaign manager of the Conway Yep. Yeah. I see the signs. I see the signs going yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah, I do have some. Uh, I, I, there are signs available. Uh, all signs available. Um, I move that we um, sign a letter of endorsement for Paul Mark. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Um, there's a vote to allow me to sign the ver vertex decommissioning agreement that was about the landscaping. And yep. I, did you all see that? Yep. Same. Any questions? I did not. I uh, move that we allow Phil to sign the vertex decommissioning agreement on behalf of the select board. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, who seconded? I did. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this decommissioning agreement was put in there. <clears throat> and then uh, select board priorities for projects. <coughs> so we put this in because we thought it was going to be like a slow week. It's something for us to talk yeah, about. Yeah, um, we but, table this till, <laughs> unless you have anything. Absolutely. I mean, right. it's certainly, uh, um, I will say next week is going to be a long meeting. So we might, we might want to consider taking it. We are meeting next Monday. I'm sorry, the 29th. <laughs> Oh, Janine. Next meeting with Janine. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, up to you, but I'm just saying. Just, yeah. I have to be remote for that meeting, but I will be there. So I have to be remote. Table for 30 days. Sure. And if yeah. people, you know, feel free to send me any of your ideas. Or, you know, one of the things I want to do is. I'm thinking my damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that was really um, I didn't punch you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, we got to vote to approve the minutes of August 1st. Did we do that? That's, yes, yeah, we okay. did do the warrants. Yeah. Do the warrants. <laughs> so we have the accounts payable warrant. In the amount of one hundred ninety-six thousand four hundred seven dollars sixty-one cents, they were all warranted in the amount of eighty-nine thousand six hundred forty-two dollars and five cents, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of twenty-one thousand eight hundred fifty-three dollars and eighty-four cents. I move to approve the warrants. I didn't have any questions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gina. Meetings attended by select board members. Last Monday, I attended the planning board uh, committee meeting, but not as a representative of this committee as a uh, civilian. <laughs> I've not had any. I have not conferences, but no new proper meetings. Yeah, excuse. Um, public comments, unfinished business, none. Items not anticipated 48 hours, none. Town administrator update. 
And so I'm happy so, to read it if you want, but there wasn't. I read it. Yeah, read it. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Select board member comments, concerns. Anybody? Try to get in the uh, mail. We, we need a regional transportation authority representative select with any core. They meet four times a year. It's with people that might have an interest in transportation issues. Even though the, I mean, the, we're not certified. We yeah, are though. They, they they do the we have we have the um, on demand service yeah. that, that people, especially our seniors, that they a lot of there's a couple of dozen people that depend on that for their lives for food shopping and doctor's appointments. And they, it's a good service. They get a round trip to Greek to like Big Y for I think five bucks or something like that. So does the representative have to be one of us or yeah, no, someone from no, the last one? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be, but um we haven't been on it for a couple of years. And you know, it's one of those things that if you just let if the only people on it are from Greenfield, then all the benefits will always flow in that direction. So it's we really need somebody. Yeah. So so I'm on two boards right now that I haven't been contacted for yet. So I'm a little concerned. Either people don't have don't have to reach out to me it's august or i'm missing okay. meetings no it's august. it's august okay so it's just because it's a law yeah. okay all right well if you're on two boards i'm willing to be the frta representative awesome that's awesome uh, i'll just most of the point erica only four times a year that's close <laughs> all in favor I, I wonderful thank you erica um and our next announcements um our next meeting is two weeks from tonight the 29th which will be a transfer station focused meeting yes and we do have a lot to talk about there could we extend the invite to the workers absolutely okay oh yeah 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 Hopefully they can. I'll be honest, I don't think many of them Zoom. <laughs> well, I, I talked to them last week come in. on Wednesday when I was there just to see if they were available. So well, most of them were walking distance from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, we can move to adjourn till the point. Uh, second. Okay, right. Thank you, everybody.